you are welcome to yet another episode of HN What's Your Say? The number one listening show where we discuss real issues with real people like you. We are still featuring R. Kelly. Real name Robert Sylvester Kelly. Also known as the R&B King. At the Chicago appeal hearing after R. Kelly's lead attorney Jennifer Bond Jean had made her submission during which she addressed two main issues as follows, the exorbitantly lengthy 240 months prison sentence that was way above the recommended standard guidelines range, and the deliberate violation of the statutes of limitations by government when they indicted R. Kelly on charges from decades ago, it was finally the representative of government state attorney Brian Williams' turn to take the stand. Ms. Bonjean had already done a good job outlining the government excesses and violations of the law, and those listening in were all ears to hear what the government representative had to say about this. Brian Williams made a comment which until today remains debatable, and that was when he said that the government's decision to issue an above-guidelines range sentence was entirely based on his analysis of the 3553A factors. By 3553A factors, the state attorney meant the factors derived from the evidence presented which included the VHS videotape among other rather contradicting testimonies made by his accusers. Brian Williams who started his presentation sounding confident quickly begun to stimmer when he turned to exposing the very side he represents as prejudicial, and that is when he gave a shocking explanation as to why the district federal judge chose to issue a sentence above the standard guidelines range. According to Brian Williams, the primary basis for the above guidelines sentence was the court's finding that the defendant's conduct was horrible, horrific and deserving of very serious consequences for Mr. Kelly. And as if he didn't realize the gravity of what he had just spoken, he goes on to say he believed the appeal court had already picked up on that, in an attempt to make listeners believe the Supreme Judge shared the same opinion. Just how can a whole judgment and subsequent overcharged sentence be based on such a personal opinion as feeling that the defendant or his actions are horrible and then horrific? So if anyone thinks a person is horrible, they should be locked up in prison for 240 months. If only he knew Brian Williams that just saying this about the R&B King makes him a horrible man himself, perhaps he would understand why this feeling of personal judgment should never be used as basis to lock up anybody in a prison cell. The trial court judges just can't go around locking up citizens they feel are horrible, or that have been involved in actions they regard horrific like he put it. Before he decided to add such a weak argument to his submission, he needed to remember that back in the years it was thought of as horrible to be black in this country, and whenever a black person walked into an all-white restaurant, his action was regarded horrible and horrific by the oppressors. A current example is the way people of one religion will strongly believe that it is in fact horrible and horrific to belong to another sect, reducing the whole idea of being horrible or horrific to nothing more than personal opinion about others. Well, we do not expect our judges who are well trained in the laws of our country, and who are paid taxpayers money to make important legal decisions on the basis of their personal opinions. They ought to remember that horror is relative. What's horrible to one may not necessarily be horrible or horrific to another, and therefore this cannot be used as a measure to determine how legal decisions are made to a point of sentencing a defendant above guidelines range for such reasons. Judges are obligated to follow the law and to make decisions only basing on what the statute of this land state. Not how they feel about someone or their personal opinion of him. But for a state attorney to take to the Supreme Court of Appeals, and confidently state how the trial judge issued an above guidelines range sentence, only because he felt the defendant's actions were horrible and horrific as a display of shamelessness and utter impunity among our government officials and within the Department of Justice. This is not any different from a thief who has been caught red-handed stealing from a food store giving the excuse of hunger as a justification for one's actions. As though to suggest that whatever they did was not against the law only because they have an explanation for it. The kind of protection for the judge we expected from the state attorney was clear reasons for the above guidelines range sentence that relate with the statute. For example he could have listed excesses or aggravations in defendant's actions as basis but he didn't. This is because indeed there were no such aggravations to call for an above guidelines sentencing. All he could speak on were the personal opinions of the judge about the defendant and his alleged actions. According to Murray, we are glad the state attorney finally told us the genesis of the exorbitant sentences imposed onto R. Kelly by the trial judges which when well understood, 
we cannot rule out prejudice. Legal experts have already started raising concerns about the prejudicial nature of such language and the potential of such opinions to influence public perceptions and the entire judicial process. There is no way a judge who feels this way about defendant's alleged actions can ensure such a trial is fair for the defendant. There is a delicate balance to maintain in safeguarding the defendant's right to a fair trial and nourishing personal opinions of the sort. The use of emotionally charged language like horrible and horrific can potentially prejudice the jury and undermine the presumption of innocence that should prevail until guilt is proven beyond a reasonable doubt. While one may argue that this occurred during the sentencing phase, there is no doubt the trial judge could have had the very same opinion of Robert before and during trial. We therefore cannot rule out prejudice after hearing this. The trial judge ought to know that it is in fact illegal to attempt to build justice upon principles of impartiality and unfairness, and it's imperative for prosecutors and judges to refrain from making statements that could sway public opinions or create a prejudicial atmosphere surrounding the case. Such opinions as the one Brian Williams mentioned during the appeal court hearing run the risk of prejudicing fellow judges and jurors, and complicating efforts to ensure an objective and unbiased trial. In fact the State Attorney's Office and Department of Justice should exercise caution in their public statements, as such opinions only taint the entire judicial process. According to Martina, I was not surprised to learn that the trial judge in fact thought of R. Kelly this way, and it's no wonder such inflammatory language managed to surface even in front of the Supreme Judges. This shows just how difficult it is to hide the truth of what really happened for a very long time. The state attorney was so clear in his statement and everyone who listened now knows that objectivity was completely lost when the judge started feeling this way about R. Kelly and his alleged deeds. While anything can be disgusting, horrible and horrific, not everything can be illegal. Instead of feeling this way about R. Kelly's alleged actions, the trial judge should have instead focused on determining whether anything he did broke the law or didn't. That is what we pay him for and not to decide how horrible defendants and their actions are. If you wish to take part in a live interview on this channel discussing any of these topics, let us know by emailing us on sashahnnewsroom at gmail.com for scheduling. That is all we had for you today on HN What's Your Say? To keep updated whenever we post a new video, subscribe to this channel now. Also remember to hit the bell icon and enable notifications. And feel free to share your opinions with us in the comment section below and let us know if you would like us to publish your views in our next release. We value all our subscribers' opinions.